Good evening. In this video, I just want to go over the PV is equal to NRT formula we discussed in our uh, experiment nine, I believe, last week. So we we had a balloon, we had the Erlenmeyer flask, we had uh, CO2 that was released. Uh, we talked about the ideal gas law, which is here PV is equal to NRT. And I just want to take step by uh, I want to take a step by step approach in how to handle this problem, so that when you see something like it in the future, you'll be able to tackle the problem. So basically, the first thing, and I have some notes here, I'm just going back to here, but uh, we, we had the pressure, right? I'm just going to use a certain number today, but we had a pressure and we converted that to millimeter mercury. So let's say we start with 29.5 mercury, and then we converted that to millimeter mercury. Um, or oh, if we started with, uh, you, you know, inches uh, mercury, and then we multiply that by uh, 25.4 so that gives us 749.3 millimeter mercury so we have the value for the pressure we'll be using in this problem and then we can convert that to atmosphere using a cross multiplication now cross multiplication setups or proportion setups involve where you state what you know you know 760 millimeter mercury is equal to one atmosphere and 749.3 millimeter mercury is equal to X atmosphere. So you basically cross multiply and you solve for X. In this case, we're going to have, uh, you know, we take 760 and we'll, we'll put that in the denominator. So it'd be 749.3 times one divided by 760 millimeter mercury. This will give us the value of X in atmosphere, right? The, or the, the pressure in atmosphere. So very important step. So we have the pressure and we can, uh, we can convert that obviously to uh, um, uh, atmosphere. So we have the pressure as 0.986 atmosphere. So we found the pre pressure of 0.986. Let's now find uh, for our temperature, let's say the temperature was 72 degrees Fahrenheit which is a temperature that sounds pretty good. I like, uh, you know, when it's warmer. Uh, so 72 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, we could convert that to Celsius. That would become about 22.2 degrees Celsius. And then we could convert that to Kelvin by adding 273, right? So we could convert that to Kelvin. We have 295.2 Kelvin. So we have temperature, we have pressure. Now keep in mind what we are solving for um, is, is, is the number of moles. It's important to know that whenever you're given a formula, you want to try and find out what do I need, what do I have, and what am I looking for? So if PV is equal to NRT, and you're solving for N, then you divide both sides by RT. So this is uh, one way to solve this literal, it's called either a literal equation in some textbooks in math, or an abstract equation in some other textbooks, um, you could call it a, a you know, multi-step equation with variables. Uh, but the idea is you're getting rid of the RT on the right side and now it's on the left side or, or the other way around. So then N is equal to PV divided by RT. So basically, the number of moles can be found using this formula. We, we, we have a value for R that we can use as well, which is a constant, and we'll come back to that in a second. The point of this video, again, is really to help you see how we set up each step, and you can watch it and see where you might have questions. Let me know if you have any questions after you watch the video as well. And so basically, we have 0 0.0H21 for R. So if we plug this here, our pressure is 0 0.986 atmosphere. Right, I'll come back to volume in a second. R is 0 0.0821, and it has a very long set of units, which I'm not going to write right now. And then the temperature is 295.2 Kelvin. Now, I mean, sure, we can write this. We have liter atmosphere per Kelvin mole. Right, so we can write out the full value of what that looks like. Let's take a step back now and talk about what happened in the beginning. In the beginning, we had 2.4 grams of, uh, of sodium bicarbonate. So we had 2.4 grams of NaHCO3. We can do some math here to basically convert this to the moles 
of NaHCO3. The way we do that is we you write the molar mass of NaHCO3 and that is 84.01. Now, what is this going to do for us? Well, let's find out how many moles of NaHCO3 were used to start with and that is 0 0.0286 moles of NaHCO3, right? So it's important to know that that is the number of moles of the sodium bicarbonate. Now, it's also good to know the balanced equation in question because that will help us to see how the mole ratios work out because that's also important. So remember, I know there was many steps that we were working with, but it's important to remember to take it one step at a time, look at what you've been given and look at where you need to get to, right? So let's, uh, we'll, take, we'll pause here for a second and we'll continue with the volume and, and uh, the number of moles of CO2. So we have pressure, we have temperature, we have um, R, which is a constant. Now, how do we find the volume of CO2? Uh, well, remember, that was where we talked about taking the balloon and finding the circumference, right? So you find the circumference around that balloon. And after you find the circumference, for example, 30 centimeters, then you use the formula C is equal to 2 pi R, right? That's the formula for circumference. And you basically remove the 2 and pi from both sides. Why are we doing this? Because we're trying to solve for R. So R is C divided by 2 pi, which is 30 divided by 2 times, actually I was already writing 2 times pi, but 2 times 3.14, which would be for using 3.14. So that's basically 30 divided by 6.28. And I apologize, the board space is little here. So you have to uh, take notes gradually here in your own notebook. So 30 divided by 6.28, which will give us about 4.777 centimeters for the radius of this balloon, you know, the, for the radius of the balloon in question. Why is the radius important? Because then we're going to take that information and we're going to try and use it to calculate the volume of a sphere. And the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So you plug that into that formula. So let's talk about that formula and then we'll continue with the problem. So for the volume, the volume of a sphere. So now we have another formula to take into account. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. We take the r, it's 4.777. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to use 4.8 here for simplicity. We take that and we plug it in here. Remember on your calculator, it's good to just take care of that. PEMDAS, very good skill from uh, pre-algebra, if you remember where you talk about order of operation. So PEMDAS. Now, I'm, I'm sure you're seeing that math and chemistry really go hand in hand. Chemistry depends on a lot of math to function. So don't be discouraged by any of these concepts if you've forgotten. Just go back and uh, either look at examples or let me know what aspect of this problem you need more practice with and we can give you that. Or just um, take good notes, you know, ask questions, don't give up because of any math uh, topic that you might have forgotten. Uh, so you, you, you use PEMDAS here, 4.8 times 4.8 times 4.8. We multiply that if we want by 3.14, we multiply that by 4 and then we divide by three, right? We divide the whole thing essentially by three. So that's what we do to find the volume. And that volume, uh, for simplicity, I'm just gonna write that here as 456 centimeters cubed, which is actually the same as 0 0.456 liters. So 0 0.456 liters. So we have volume now, which we can use in our formula. Remember we had pressure, we had uh, we had R and we had T, and now we have volume, which is given as 0 0.456 liters. Notice the units are important. We need to have the right units, right? So that's what we do there. We have uh, 0 0.456 liters. So now we plug everything into our formula. So basically we have PV is equal to NRT. It's always a good idea to write the formula that you're going to be working with, and then solve for the variable and then write down the values of the things you have, right? And then basically substitute them in. So we know that our pressure is, uh, let's see, 0 0.986 atmosphere. We know that our uh, volume was 0 0.456 liters. We know that R is 0 0.0821. We have liter atmosphere per, kilo, per Kelvin mole. 
and we know that the uh, the temperature would be Kelvin here, which is, we did that earlier, so 295.2 Kelvin. Okay, so we take the values that we've been given, and we basically substitute, uh, we plug this into a calculator, and that will give you a specific answer. So let's go ahead and look at what that answer will be. So this answer for this particular one, for time purposes, I'm just going to mention, this will become, when you plug all this, you get 0. 0187 moles of CO2, right? That is the number of moles of CO2. Now, remember earlier we found the number of moles of NaH CO3. So that was 0 0.0286 moles of NaH CO3. How did we find that? We basically took the number of the grams that we measured out and we, and we divided that by the molar mass. That gave us the number of moles of NaHCO3. So where do we go from here? We found the number of moles of, uh, of, of NaHCO3. We found the, the number of moles of CO2. Uh, and now we want to find out how much, what was the grams of CO2 that was produced. And then what's the actual yield and the theoretical yield and the, you know, what, what, what sorry, what's the uh, uh, actual, yes, what did we actually get and what is the theoretical? So let's talk about those two portions here in the last part of this video. For the actual yield of CO2, like how much CO2 did we actually get? Remember that we calculated the number of moles of CO2 that we got. It was 0 0.0187 moles of CO2. Now, again, this is using the numbers that I have, and that could vary from person to person, depending on what your circumference of your balloon was, which could have been affected by how the, uh, you know, how the baking soda reacted with the hydrochloric acid. And so we take the moles that we found from our calculation, and we multiply that by the molar mass of CO2. When we do that, essentially think of this canceling that unit. So your answer is going to be in grams, and that is 0 0.823 grams of CO2. So that is the actual amount we, we got, right? Using this number that I got from the circumference. Um, but what is the theoretical yield? What, what is the amount that would be expected uh, just based on the calculations before we do any experiments? What is, what is the, the theoretical yield? Well, you take that molar uh, number of moles of sodium bicarbonate and NaHCO3 and you use stoichiometry based on the balanced equation, which I'm going to write on the bottom here. So we have NaHCO3 plus HCl is giving us H2O plus NaCl plus CO2, right? And we can write out the, the different pieces. We had a solid here, aqueous, we have a liquid, we have water there, and then we have aqueous, we have a gas of CO2 that was released. Now notice that the ratio is one to one between the NaHCO3 and the CO2 over there. It's a one to one ratio. So when we start with 0 0.0286 moles of NaHCO3, we put the next step here, one mole of NaHCO3 matches up with one mole of CO2. So notice that the moles of NaHCO3 will cancel the moles of NaHCO3. And then the next step here is we basically convert that to grams per mole, right, of 44.01. And I apologize, I should have written that over here as well. 44.01 is the um, molar mass of CO2. So when you multiply this out, right, because this is going to cancel the moles of CO2, your answer will be 1.26 grams of CO2. So that's your theoretical yield, right? So you have your theoretical yield and you have your actual yield. So you take your actual yield and you divide that by your theoretical yield and that will give you the percent yield. So basically we'll do that last step and then I'll tell you some reasons for why you might have had a low amount of uh, uh, a, a low percentage yield. So basically we have the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield. So this last step here, we're looking at the percent yield. So we started with what was our pressure, temperature, volume, what is the value of R? We took those values and we calculated the number of moles of CO2. Then we also had information about the volume of CO2 and also used that to find the grams of CO2 that was produced. 
So basically, oh, oh, sorry, I take it back. We use that information to find the volume, which we then use to find the number of moles. So we found what we needed for CO2. We also found the number of moles for NaHCO3. And we used that information to help us find the theoretical yield. We found the theoretical yield. We found the actual yield. We divided the actual divided by theoretical, and that gave us a percent yield. Our percent yield came out to about 65.3%. Why are we getting only about 65%, which is a pretty good number, by the way, by, by certain standards. But wh why is 65% one of the reasons? Well, there could have been a leak from the balloon. They could have, uh, you could have spilled some baking soda after weighing it. Um, there could have been, a, a, you know, the circumference could have been hard to get, right, perfectly. Um, pouring baking soda in before sealing the flask. These are some of the, uh, you know, uh, reasons for why you might have had a low percent yield. So I want to encourage you to go back and see what aspect of this video you want to sort of dive into further and better understand. But my hope is that this has helped you in the process of understanding how to work with percent yield, how to work with the uh, ideal gas law, uh, the ideal gas equation. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, please. I hope this is helpful. I will go ahead and make a video for the next lab so you have an idea of what calculations to be expecting. So. Thanks for watching this video and have a wonderful day.